Hey, what's up with it, King? What's up with it, Queen? You already know who it is. It's your big brother, DeMont Pope, a.k.a. Mr. Purpose Over Pointless Excuses. Yeah! Yeah, I already know what time it is, man. Look, every week I'm bringing you value. I got special guests every week that come do the same thing. Look, this week it don't stop. I got another very special guest. But look, if you haven't already, I need you to hit that subscribe button, right? Yeah! I need you to hit that notification bell so you know when we're releasing new content. Also, hit the thumbs up, like, leave a nice comment do whatever you got to do but look share this with about five to ten people who you want to see pursue their purpose over pointless excuses look i know y'all ready so without further delay i want to present to some introduce to others my very special guest mr jason nemis yeah what's up man what's up bro Hey, hey you already know first off did i get that name right you did. I when when you were saying my name, I was sitting there like, is he gonna get it right? But yeah, man, you nailed it. Nailed it. Man, listen, bro. First of all, welcome to the King Speaks Podcast, bro. Thank you so much for taking time out your busy schedule to come kick it with your bro, man. You ready? I am as ready as I'll ever be. And thank you for having me, man. When you asked me, I was uh, I was extremely grateful um for the opportunity. So again, appreciate you. It's been a long time since we've seen each other. I, it feels like forever, but yeah, man, it's uh, it's good to be on here. Your energy is always electric. So, hey, man, yeah, I'm, man. I'm grateful to have you, bro. We finna jump off in, and it has been a minute, man. So it has. since it's been a minute, we gonna get reacquainted real quick. So, so go ahead, Jason. Let us know exactly who you are, and tell us exactly what it is that you do, my bro. Cool, man. So again, my name is Jason Nemes, as you heard. And who am I? Uh, you know, I, I'm a I'm a I'm a man that is fulfilling his purpose on this earth. Um, mm -hmm. What I truly feel that I'm called to do, and with that, I I have a massive multi million dollar uh, health and wellness business. You know, we my business generates millions of dollars a year, yeah. and I'm a best selling author called The Code of Behavior which that's my book right there on all platforms, number one international bestseller. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, serial entrepreneur, also speaker, coach, and the real estate, just a, a lot of other things, but mainly is my health and wellness business. You know, my day-to-day -day is a health and wellness business. Speaking, I love speaking for kids. I just did a, a five, five school, three days speaking tour um, at, at some high schools in Texas and uh, looking to book some stuff right now in Tennessee. And yeah, man, it's out here living, uh, living out my purpose. Yeah. yeah. And I love how you answered that, bro. Like that was the first thing that stuck out when I asked the question, you was like, man, look, I'm a man out here living my purpose, bro. That's we could have ended the podcast right there before <laughs> yeah. it even got started. You feel me? Look, man. I'm Mr. Purpose over pointless excuses. So anytime yeah. somebody come on here and drop the, the secret word, it get me excited. And you already know my energy already be on 10. I bro. already know. <laughs> All day. So, yeah. You feel me? So, so my bro, you said health and wellness, right? You're doing yes. health and wellness. You're doing speaking, right? You just got you just got done speaking to some students, and you're in the process of booking more engagements as we speak, right? I see the book that you got there. We talking about international bestseller, man. Multi-million yes, dollar business you're running. You a serial entrepreneur, bro. So so let's get all the way into that, bro. How long have you been a man walking in your purpose? Let's go. So it's a great question because I felt like I was truly walking in my purpose uh, since 2013. Mm. But... I mean, you know what happened with me, right? With my heart and what happened. Yeah, yeah. let's talk about it. They don't know, so fill it in. Yeah, let's they go. don't know. So, well, should I go through the story? Yeah, let's do it. Is? All right. Let's do it, bro. So Easter. So this is how, this is what transpired to me truly living out my purpose. Right? Remember, again, I thought I was living out my purpose starting in 2013. But after the story I'm about to tell you, that's when things really started to go to the next level Yeah, for me in my life. So it was Easter of all days uh, last year, April 4th, 2021. My girlfriend and I, we got up and we decided to go to the gym and uh, went to a, a location that was about 25, 30 minutes from the, where we were living, uh, downtown Austin at the time. 
there's a gym really close by, but a couple of my buddies wanted me to train them, do you know, work out together. So we drove out there, hit legs, and then we wanted or they wanted to play basketball. So yeah. I I beat him in uh around the world. I'm a pretty good shooter. I mean, I can play basketball, but I'm a really good at shooting. And he was like an all-star basketball player. Mm -hmm. And I beat him the last time. So he challenged me to go play him again. I was like, cool. It wasn't supposed to be like playing basketball, right? Just shooting. Yeah. So we get down there. There's these three dudes on the court. You already know what's next. You know, yeah. they're talking their smack. Let's play. So we ended up playing three on three. Mind you, I was about 245 pounds at the time. I was putting on weight, not doing a lot of cardio. I wasn't in shape to play basketball. Uh, mm -hmm. Had low top shoes on. You know, I roll ankles anyway. Yeah. So decided <laughs> I, I said yes, even though I knew I shouldn't have. But uh the competitive side got me. So said yes, we played, played three games, half court. But anyway, we we leave the gym, and I noticed I'm having a pain in my chest, and my breathing is a little off, and I'm starting to get a headache, and my arm is starting to go a little bit numb. Now, in my bodybuilder years, I got a pinched nerve on my neck, so my arm already goes numb throughout the day from time to time. So we get in the car, we're driving back to the house. The he the symptoms are getting worse. So for the headache, stopped at the gas station to get some Advil or what, ibuprofen, whatever it was. Yeah. And so I, I took that. We got back on the road. And after about five minutes, I just remember looking at my girlfriend like, something is not right. And I'm, because the numbing is happening, I'm trying to like adjust how I'm sitting in the car. Maybe like, you know, I'm, I'm on the nerve. And that's what's causing the numbing. So I'm trying to like adjust to get it off, but that's not what it was. So I told her, I'm like, something is truly not right. I want to go to an ER clinic. And again, it's Easter. So there's nobody on the road. If you know anything about Austin, Texas, tons of traffic all the time. Horrible. Wow. So I, I look up a an ER clinic. There's one five minutes away and we get there. And I mean, I got there in five minutes. And uh, pull up right to the front, get out the car, run in there. They're like, sir, how can we help you? I said, I, I think I'm having a heart attack. Wow. And uh, and then they asked me to see my ID, which I still to this day, I'm like, yo, I just told you I think I'm having a heart attack and you're asking me you for my ID. ID. Come on, man, get me to the wow. back. But, you know, they're trained to stay very calm. Yeah. Well, I left my ID in the car, so I had to run back outside. And me, I'm having a heart attack this entire time. So I run back, get my ID, come back inside, give them the ID. And thankfully, they had enough grace in their hearts to let me do the paperwork later on. So they didn't have me fill out the paperwork there. They just got my ID, rushed me to the back. They hooked me up to the EKG. And I'll never forget when the doctor read, like when he looked at the reading and he looked at me and just the face that he had. And he was like, sir, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you're suffering a severe heart attack right now. And this was my second heart attack. My first heart attack was so mild, I didn't even know it was a heart attack. Mm. And doctors exaggerate things sometimes, I feel like, right? Uh, and so for me, he's saying it's severe. I'm like, yo, I've already had a heart attack. This is just going to be another heart attack that where I just, I don't even really know where I just walk out. Cause I knew I was having it this time, but for me, it's like, I'm going to walk out of here in 30 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever, but it's not severe. Like he's saying. Wow. So then they lay me off. They lay me down on the table. They, I, I would imagine like every single person in that clinic is in my room. I mean, there's people everywhere and they're scrambling, doing whatever that, you know, their job is to do in that Ooh. situation. And they're having me chew stuff, swallow stuff, all this different stuff, man. Like so many different things. And uh, and I'll never forget where I just, man, I, I felt myself fading out. So like I would be good and then I wouldn't be good. I would be communicating with them the whole time. Like, man, I, I like my chest is really hurting. I, I can't really breathe. And then I was like, okay, I'm feeling better. And then it got to a point where it was so bad. I was like, man, y'all got to do something. Like, I feel like I'm fading out. I, I feel like, you know, I can't breathe. You ought to do something. Please help me. God, please help me. And I actually, I died on the table. And then I just, uh, everything went black. Everybody always asked me if I had, you know, if I remember anything, if I saw the white light. Wait, wait, Jay. Wait, wait a minute, yeah. bro. Yeah. Wait, wait. We gonna have to, 
I had to clear my throat, bro. We're going to have to run that back because I want to make sure that they heard that for clarity. Like, no, you ain't nothing wrong with the audio. You did hear what he just said. And in yeah. case you think you didn't, he's about to say it again. Jason, one more time, let the people know what you just said happened to you, bro, on that table while you were in that hospital. Yeah, on Easter, April 4, 2021, I died of a massive heart attack. I had a 100% blockage of my Widowmaker. I had a heart attack for over two hours. And so for those of you that aren't educated on the heart, which I am now because of what's been happening, of what happened, the Widowmaker, when somebody has a heart attack there, they call it the Widowmaker because somebody's about to be a widow. Like people don't survive. So the Widowmaker is the LED artery, and that's the artery that funnels the entire body of oxygen and blood flow. So when that artery is blocked, your entire body is not getting oxygen or blood flow to it. And the left side of the heart, which is the LED artery, it cannot defib itself. The right side can. So if you have a if you have a heart attack like that on at the LED artery, the widow maker, if you don't get to a place where they can defib you, you die. Wow. And they told me a 60 second difference. Like if I would have shown up I uh can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. You went out for a second. You were saying 60 seconds. Yeah. If uh, if I would have showed up 60 seconds later, I wouldn't have made it, is what they said. Man. I mean, you know, and that's, that's their prediction based on what they've seen. And he, let, let's take it a step further about timing and, man, so the lady that defibbed me and did CPR for me to bring me back, well, she said she was praying to the Lord the whole time she was giving me CPR. Wow. But... She only works at that uh, at that ER clinic like once or twice a month. Normally, she works at the ER at the hospital, and she specializes in heart attacks. It's like yo, Bro, like we're talking about she she Easter. Could, I think oh, just the wow. alignment, and then the no traffic in Austin. Bro, we talking oh, about yeah. so many different divine situations. First of all, we finna go back, man. Like this all started because you 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 hooping. You ain't had no business playing basketball, like you said. You ain't had Correct. no business playing basketball. You 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 had just said you hadn't been doing your cardio. Correct. You had been putting on some pounds, right? I'm trying to make sure I got this right. So yep. you out there to play ball, but you got this feeling, and you ain't really thinking is that serious at first because you you talked about the numbness that you get from from bodybuilding, right? Right. Yep. And then all of a sudden, here you are being rushed to the emergency room where they asking you for your ID, you're having a heart attack. They ask you for your ID. You got to run back to the car in the midst of having a heart attack. You run back to the car. Oh my God, Jason, yeah, bro, this is phenomenal. This phenomenal. These Thank people you. saying that you flatlined, you died, right? They say the you would have been 60 seconds longer. Oh, bro, am I the only one that feel the temperature rising up in here? Am I the only one feel the chill, I'm bro? So, I'm so, I, I'm so, I start sweating every time. Come on, so I got to wipe my beard. Yeah, Man, yeah. I, look, I'm wiping my neck. I'm wiping yeah. everything, bro, because it's like, I know I've heard the story before, and I'm sitting here like I haven't heard it. But clearly, bro, it's been over a year since you and I have had a conversation, yeah. right? So, so, so for me hearing this again, and it's having the same effect that it had the first time. And I'm pretty sure the listeners, I'm pretty sure they're at the edge of their seat right now, bro. Cause I want to know, like, like walk me through when, when, when the doctors are telling you this and you're conscious enough to receive this information, like not to mention the lady that was, th that just so happened to have been there working on you, resuscitating you, praying the whole time. So we know that there's a divine connection taking place. We know that there's a divine intervention. Take me through what you're thinking, bro, when you're conscious and you're awake and they're telling you what just happened. And what take us to that moment, bro? Yeah. So it man, it really is so crazy. I just got wow. chills through my entire body. Um, so when I woke up, I didn't eat, I, I couldn't open my eyes yet. Like, but I heard my name, Jason, Jason, right? And obviously they started saying my name because they got the beep, you know, on the little scanner thing. So yeah. they know that my heart was coming, like it came back. And I had a pulse. Mm. And so I hear my name. And then I open my eyes and I look to the right of me. And the doc's like, welcome back, sir. 
and I was I was kind of dumbfounded and he was like you died and she just saved your life mm. and I just I won't forget I'll never forget just looking over and I, I was like you saved my life like what huh thank you you wow. know I, I, I it was it was hard to really piece it together because it was like again I was like I went to sleep and I just woke up and but th so then it's crazy because remember I had no blood flow or oxygen to my body so mm. when I woke up I could move my head. Remember, at first I couldn't open my eyes or anything. Then I can open my eyes. I can move my head. I can't move my body. Wow. And then I can move my upper body, but I can't move my lower body. And I'm sure you know, but like when people have severe heart attacks or strokes, sometimes they end up in a coma. Sometimes like their legs don't work properly. Absolutely. Because their body's not getting blood flow. So things get messed up. Yeah. And, uh, and I start freaking out with the leg thing. Like when I couldn't move my legs, I kind of started panicking a little bit. Yeah. And uh, they're like, sir, we need you to calm down. And I'm like, duh, don't tell me to calm. <laughs> but then my legs started moving and uh, I was good to go. And the paramedics were there ready. Like when I woke the paramedics were there. Yeah. And uh, right when I woke up, they did whatever they did real fast. And they loaded me up on that stretcher and got me into the ambulance and they rushed me for emergency surgery at the hospital. Man. And I'll tell you this too, a lot of people in the ambulance on the way to the hospital, they will have more heart attacks. They'll keep having heart attacks and then like they'll die on the way. Jeez. Oh. But uh, but I, I didn't. I didn't have any more heart Sweet, attacks dude. on the way. I got there. They got me prepped. They rushed me to the cath lab. They put a stint in. Man, what's crazy here? is that the first stint that I had put in was April 3rd, 2020, a year and a day before. Because there was the 100% blockage, and I'll, I'll go back so the listeners can understand this part. Yeah, I, I had 100% blockage the whole time, like my mild heart attack, but my heart grew from the good side to the bad side oh to God. get blood flow there. Wow. And that's what saved me. From going into heart failure and so the, the reason the way that i found out that something wasn't right with my heart was i decided that i wanted to start doing some cardio so when i lived in nashville i joined i joined orange theory and so when i was started doing cardio like when i would pick up the pace i would start getting pains in my chest mm -hmm. and then i would stop and then the pains would go away so then i went and had some testing done thank god and then with that testing we found that i had that blockage but my heart had grown grown over to the other side. So that that's why at rest I was okay because I had enough blood flow being routed, but at the high heart rate and blood pressure that my heart wasn't getting enough blood flow to it to pump correctly. Yeah. Right? So, so yeah, they didn't get that stint in all the way. Mm. So that's what prompted the second heart attack. And because I was playing basketball, like, I mean, when I play, I'm playing, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I'm going for, All the way I'm in. hustling. Yeah, I'm hustling. Yeah. And so that, that that was a massive heart attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the the buildup was, it was like 100%, <laughs> you know, all the plaque buildup where that stint originally was at the LED yeah. artery, it was completely blocked. So, and then I think, man, what if yeah. I was yeah. on a mountain? Come or on, what man. if I was driving yeah. and for some reason I have a heart attack, I'm in the middle of nowhere, no service. Mm. Like talk I'm screwed. That. Yeah. Talk, talk that talk, bro. Cause, well, cause yeah. they need to know like in moments like that, bro, like I can only imagine what's racing through your mind and, and, and the, what if, what could have, should have all the scenarios, like, like take us down that road, bro. Since we here, take us down those, some of those scenarios that could have been, yep. Uh, the scenario, bro, had that had God not intervened, let's be clear that God yeah. definitely intervened. Like we are looking at a miracle in case they didn't know that this podcast has shifted into a whole nother situation. Like this one, this one is different than all the other ones, right? This one is significantly different than the other ones in case they can't tell. So talk us down, talk us through that, bro. Let's take us down that road of what it could have been like so that they know how important this moment is to be seated here with you and I, bro. Yeah, so as you were saying that, I had some things come up because most people on the what if, it's in a bad context mm. and it 
can really put you down a bad path. So this is a whole nother conversation, but I lost my little brother. He was 28 years old, December 26th, the day after Christmas, 2019. Sorry. About um, that. He did what he did and didn't wake up again. And I'm sure the listeners can figure that out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, he did what he did and didn't wake up. And this is the part of the what if where it can be bad and it can drive, it can spiral us into a very bad um, outcome. Like it can be horrible because people will feel guilt, shame. What, like, what if I would have had him live with me? What if I would have stepped in? What if I would have made one more phone call? And, and when you get to that place, you will drive yourself crazy. Yeah. But that's another topic. So the what if here, this is what got me to live my true purpose. Come on. that's what that Because was now, mm. when in this moment, like when I'm sitting in ICU after successful surgery, especially, I'll tell you this, on the third day, yeah. they transferred me out of ICU. Remember, Easter, heart attack, died. Third day, Come you on. already know the symbolism. Walk us through it. Come on. On the, on the third day, they brought the machines to test my heart before they would discharge me where I could leave the hospital. So they just had to see how my heart was functioning and all of that, the pump function, all that kind of stuff, to see if I was good to, to leave. And so on that third day, it put me into the a different floor. I'm just waiting to be tested. So they come, they do the test. My heart pump function normal. Everything is normal mm. as if nothing happened. Mm. So now talking about reflection. Come on, bro. And this is what put me in a state of, man, Widowmaker, 100% blocked. Walking out, dying and walking out like nothing happened. Like, yo, God has a plan for you. Like you could not even Definitely got purpose. A purpose, and I'm getting chills again. Come it's on, cool bro. when you, when you yeah, get this hot. hot chills. It's hot. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so, Let's go. So that's when I was like, man, I gotta get my story out. I gotta talk about this kind of stuff. I have, and I have a great platform, and uh, that's why I'm like, I gotta get in schools and talk about choices because I'll tell you this: the heart attack that I suffered. I'm gonna go ahead and say 99% self-inflicted mm. over the over the years of choices that I've made, things that I have done that caught up to me. Wow. And so, yeah, man, I'm just like, I have a bigger purpose in life than I ever realized. Yeah. And now it's time to truly live it. Like God did me a favor by keeping me around, and there's a reason for it. And I'm very clear and I don't take it lightly. And now it's time for me to serve God more than I ever have in my life. And just, man, help change the world. There's like, there's so much darkness in our world today. And uh, I get to combat that every single day. Every day. Look, and here's listen. the thing. When you're doing that, the devil attacks you even more. There you go. There you, you go. Know, he, like, he, I, that's man, what I was just going to hey. say. You you own this path <laughs> to purpose, right? And and I was just about to say, even though like you're at this, this, this pinnacle of your life where you're feeling the most fulfilled while you're empowering, you're talking about choices, but we know this enemy still want to come right out of nowhere, right? And cause some type of issue, some type of obstacle, some type of adversity. And since we're dealing with that, let's talk about an adversity and challenge that he's tried to bring your way since right since reaching the height that you've reached and sharing your story with the world because we're going to talk about some choices again in a minute if we got time but i want to talk about another obstacle that's kind of hit you as of late right on your road to purpose right now let's talk about that problem and how you're dealing with it so that the listeners know that just like just because you make it through a great storm doesn't mean that the storm is going to permanently leave you alone let's talk about it I'm trying to think of some big ones. And look, I'll, I'll say this. It, I don't even know if it's really a, a huge storm, but it's the day-to-day -day stuff. Mm. Let's you talk know? about that, bro. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, I mean, I've got some pretty good success. And after having the heart attack and coming home, I walked into my closet and I was like, man, this stuff almost didn't even matter. 
Mm. Like we get so caught up in material items and showing out and clout and all these things, thinking that it's going to bring us happiness. But if you're always, if you're always chasing something, you'll never truly be happy because you're always going to be chasing something else. I mean, hopefully, Mm. right? Like the finish line is always moving. It's like, okay, I got this ride. Well, guess what? In two or three months, or maybe even right now, there's another car that you want. Speed. And so it's like, oh, well, now I'm not happy again until I get that car. And then yeah. I get it. <laughs> and I'm not happy until I get that car. I get that watch. Speed, and that's dude. cool for a month. And I'm not happy until... So I got to a place where I was like, I was oh, I was clear on that. But then that starts to go away a little bit. Yeah. You know, and especially with social media. I mean, it's worse now than ever. And you play play the compare game, but comparison is the thief of joy. Mm. And I mean, I got well, you friends. You just dropped the bar. You say comparison yeah. is the thief of joy. I don't want y'all to miss that. Go 100%. And tweet that, text that, post that on IG. Jason said that just now on the King Speaks podcast. Yeah. Comparison is the thief of joy. There's a few people out there that can compare and get inspired, but most compare and it brings them down, mm. and they get down on themselves. But I mean, I got friends that are insanely wealthy. And then it's like, I start getting in my head. I should be farther ahead or mm. I'm more skilled than that, you know, and starting to play that game. And it's like, oh, whoa, 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 you got to stop that. That's right. And so that's that's the devil at work. And also with, you know, with, with relationship. And I'm not going to get into detail, but, you know, I have a pretty solid relationship. But of course, things come our way, yeah. you know, things that she battles and i battle and we battle together and of course you know that's personal so not going to get into it but it's the it's day-to-day stuff and how you deal with it because the devil wants you to act on emotion because when you act on emotion you can't you're not thinking properly absolutely it's like when you act on emotion you always look back and you wish you could have done it a little bit different (laughs) you know so it's like if i'm about to send a text on emotion I'll put my phone down. Chill. Come on. If I'm about to say something out of character, that would be out of character for me. And I'm in my head. I'm just going to chill. I'm going to walk away. And that's not just a relationship. That's like with anybody. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and yeah, man, we're talking about choices. Some some business, business ups and downs. Yeah. You know, that that can be frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. And having to make choices in those moments, man. Like you just said, like emotions, bro. You you can't yeah. make decisions when you 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 you're emotionally unstable. Like if you, you all in your feelings, it. you can't do it. So that brings us right back to what you be talking about, bro. Ma- making choices, and we don't know. We think it's the big choices, Jason. We think it's the big choices that make the decisions or that make the difference. It's those small things, man. Those overlooking small decisions that we think is trivial and we make bad decisions effortlessly daily. And then we look up and then we're reaping the benefits of our bad choices, man. So what I want you to do right now, right? I want you to talk to that person that's been making some choices, right? I want you to talk to that person that's looking at you, Jason, and that said, Hey man, if he can overcome everything he went through, if this man in front of me can die and still get up, and live on purpose every day and still go through and grow through the day-to-day challenges even after that even at your level of success jason talk to the person who we've sparked something in them they want to pursue this thing that we talk about called purpose bro they want to know what it feel like but they're a little bit afraid jason they may not have a support system they may not they may not be as competent or they may not have a faith-based background like you and i may have Talk specifically to that person. Empower them, bro. This that moment. Well, what I would say is you got to start where you are. And the best investment that you can make is in yourself. Mm. Because until you change, nothing in your life will change. The, the, the game of life is one in between the ears. The brain, the mind. What, what you focus on, what you think about, you will bring about. And... How can you expect to grow or elevate if you're not getting new information? There is a huge misconception, a a saying that I can't stand, and it's what you don't know won't hurt you. And that is the biggest load of crap I've ever heard 
because there's so much information out there. All you got to do is read a book. You get all this information. Now you got to act on it, right? Knowledge is a power. Applied knowledge is power. That's if you're it. not applying the information, it doesn't matter what you know. But that's like, like, man, when I started getting into the business that I'm in and I got mentors, that's another thing. Find an incredible mentor. You know, mm -hmm. ask, just go seek people that you highly respect. Ask them to help you. Yeah. You know, I got some incredible mentors in my life and they said, Jim Rohn quote, work harder on yourself than you do on your job <laughs> for things to change. You got to change. Yeah. And so, man, when you start reading, like that's a choice. What are you listening to? What are you putting into your mind? Because what comes in must go like what goes in oh, the mind wow. must come out. Speak that, you know, garbage in, garbage out. Yes, sir. Intelligence in, intelligence out. Yeah. Audio books in the car or music that probably isn't so good. That's not going to elevate you. Sure. And I love, I, I love certain music too. But here's the thing: you can have your car a nightclub or a university. You can mm. be constantly learning throughout the day, getting new information or not. So you know, yeah. When it when it comes to elevating in your life it all starts in your mind and your mindset getting the getting the tools the knowledge and going out and acting on it yeah 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 i love it man i couldn't have answered it better myself look jason i want to keep you more man but i i, I know we got to wrap it up man but look i need you to let everybody know right now where they can find you where they can connect somebody may be watching this and they like man i gotta bring this guy in to speak yeah. to my audience go ahead and let them know where they can find you bro Awesome. So my IG is at Tatted Prez. It is T-A-T-T-E-D, like Tatted, P-R-E-Z-Z-Z. -Z -Z. Or you can find me, I have a website, jasonlnemis.com. Yeah. Hey, look, man, y'all make sure y'all tap in with my bro. Listen, listen, Jason, man, I want to say thank you so much for thank taking you, time bro. out of your schedule, man. Come kick it with me, man. Thank you for the nuggets that you dropped. Listen, man, I need y'all to share this with about 25, 30 different people. Let them know what's going on over here. Y'all already know me, man. Look, that's your big bro, Jason, over there. I'm your big bro, DeMont Pope, Ooh. a.k.a. Mr. Purpose Over Pointless Excuses, letting you know purpose looks good on you. Yeah. yeah.